used to be cheap. But just like everything else in this cold, fat world, they've gotten expensive. Now this got me thinking. In 10 years, will there still be fun, cheap, used cars for younger enthusiasts to drive, modify, and enjoy? Or is the future doomed? Today, we are gonna try and figure that out. I'm James, he's Justin, and this is the d d d d Big thanks to the Zebra for sponsoring today's video. Honesty is my number one policy, which is why they call me Mr. Honest. I never lie. Hey, Mr. Honest, what do you think of my new shirt? Uh, it's very, very bad. Wow, thank you for your honesty. It is the best policy which is why I use the Zebra. The Zebra is a car insurance comparison site. They don't ask you for your phone number, so that means no spam calls, and they're honest about their intentions. They just want to help you find the right coverage at the right price at the right time. Hey, Mr. Honest, what do you think of this progression I wrote? Mm. Honestly, pretty redundant, not very good. Plus, the Zebra could save you over $400 a year on car insurance. And honestly, that's amazing. So go to thezebra.com slash dlist today to compare quotes for free and find your perfect policy today. Hey, uh, did, did somebody eat my tuna sandwich? It was me. And honestly, it was delicious. Today we're gonna look at a bunch of new cars and decide if they have potential to be cheap and fun project cars 10 years from now when the youths are all grown up. Let's start with an easy one, the sixth gen Mustang, AKA the S550. First reactions, Justin? Obviously. <laughs> yeah, so Mustangs have always been great project cars. They're cheap when they're new. Ford makes millions of them and there is a ton of aftermarket support. I think that used EcoBoost Mustangs might be the move. Even though the EcoBoost comes with a four cylinder, it still makes 310 horsepower stock and you can get it with a manual, obviously. So Justin, what do you think? Will the kids of 2030, I think they're called the alpha generation, be scooping up clapped out S550s like they're doing today with 350Zs? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, uh, I mean, one. I, thousand percent. I kind of think they're already doing it, you know, because you can get wrecked EcoBoost for like scrap money. <laughs> I've always thought of the EcoBoost Mustang as sort of like uh, Ford's Sylvia. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's two door coupe, rear wheel drive, get it with a manual. Definitely, because there's so many Mustangs that even if they do hike up in price, it'll be certain trims and models and stuff, but the four cylinder will always be cheap. So I, I think it's a shoe and like, that's definitely happening. The future is bright! <laughs> now, on the other hand, next car, what about the Mustang EV? Who? Yeah. Uh, well, they have the rear-wheel drive and the all-wheel drive, so I think people will get definitely get creative with the rear-wheel drive, but crossovers are the future, so maybe they'll start rallying them. I, I don't know. We might not have a choice. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. I hate batteries, so... I don't look forward to this. So it's not as cool as a V8 Mustang. No. Right? Absolutely. It might not be <laughs> as cool as a four cylinder Mustang, but the electric Mustang still makes about 300 horsepower. It costs about the same as a regular V8 Mustang. Uh, doesn't have a manual transmission or a real e-brake, but it's got a lot of torque. You, like you said, you can get them in rear wheel drive. Mm -hmm. And I think like in the future, we're gonna be hacking these babies with our phones. <laughs> exactly. Like we're gonna be shell breaking <laughs> our cars. And hydro e-breaking them. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I guess future's bright. Uh, you know, electric shockling bright. <laughs> <laughs> all right, next up we got something a little different. All right, something a little more from Korea. <laughs> I'm talking about the Kia Stinger. Do you like the name Stinger? I was hoping they would actually have done the original Stinger concept that they did like uh -huh. a decade ago, but I guess that's what the Genesis became. Uh -huh. But this car is awesome. It was an answer to the Charger. It's twin turbo. I believe there's a rear wheel drive and all wheel drive. A, yeah, there's like a GT with like drift mode. It's a fun car. And in 10 years, like for sure. <laughs> yeah. It's got turbos in it's it, of turbos. course. Can you get it with a manual? <laughs> uh, no, you cannot. Can't, you can't get it with a manual. Yeah. But yeah, I think like turn this into a big body, 
like drift car thing, like That's... VIP, big old wheels, mm -hmm. lots of camber. Packing into it, like you said. Uh -huh. Maybe get a get a sequential kind of joystick in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if they're cheap enough, you can afford to you know swap a well, transmission. That's the thing. It's a Kia. Of course, it's gonna get cheap. Yeah, this isn't gonna be Harold in later years at all. Uh, I think future's bright. I think so as well. Another Korean car that I think has potential comes from a company called Hyundai. Between the Veloster, the Kona, the Elantra N models, I think they have potential to be pretty cheap, fun cars in a few years. All those cars that I mentioned have turbocharged four cylinders. They make 276 horsepower. That's as much as an R34 Skyline. Oh, wow. They are front wheel drive, if that's something that you care about. Some people like it, and they do come with six speed manual. I wonder if the manuals from these can be yanked out. <laughs> and match to something see, else. See, I like where your head's at, see? <laughs> like, this kind of proves to me that in the future, people are gonna be doing stuff like this. We're all gonna be mad scientists yeah. in the future. Yeah. I mean, we have no choice. Yeah. You know, manuals are gonna be this thing that is a complete separate manufacturing thing that people are gonna be like, hey, guess what? Here's this manual, here's this motor. <laughs> you can fit this bell housing. Here's an adapter, you know? Yeah, with, yeah. so enough of these are gonna get crashed because they're turbo and have a lot of pops and bangs that eventually they'll just be complete garbage, cheap cars. But while we're getting there, maybe later on down the line, they'll go up in value when there's not a lot of them left. But these are mass manufactured, so turbo engines are everywhere now. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's one of the main reasons the future's bright. Everything's turbo. Everything's turbo. <laughs> yeah, like, these are, you know, more on the boring side of the list, but they still have 276 horsepower. That's more than anything I've owned. <laughs> yeah. yeah, nothing in the 90s from the 90s has that much power. I think they're gonna get like Scion TC cheap. Oh, oh. <laughs> you know? I forgot that like in 10 years, yeah. like manufacturing is gonna be so much better than it's, it is it's now. It's gonna be quick, 3D printing, scanning, like. <laughs> The future's bright. Now we can't do a list of cheap cars without mentioning the original OG cheap tuner car. I'm talking about the Honda Civic. And I think the Type R's will probably be expensive forever, but the SI is a great, if not kind of ugly car. It makes 200 horsepower, has a six speed. It's got room for all your friends and dogs. And there's, you know, it's a Honda. There's tons and tons of aftermarket support. I don't know that these are gonna get cheap. I don't, I'm doubtful as well, but I don't think they'll get cheap if things are going the way they're going. Exactly. It's got the pedigree. Yeah. Like if you say you drive a Honda Civic SI, people are like, ooh. <laughs> and it's always been that way. Like every single yeah. SI has been at least pretty good. Yeah. So I don't think this car will ever get cheap. I don't know if that means that the future is doomed. Well, we're gonna hit that hill soon, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be like, Honda is giving us that last little bit, you uh -huh. know, it's just like, hey, you know, we're gonna keep giving you this stuff until we can't anymore. And that's what's gonna make this not go down in price. So I don't think the kids are doomed, but uh, more than you can afford, pal, <laughs> Honda. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what about the Supra, Justin? I don't think I need to convince you that Supras are fun. Question is, will they depreciate enough for budget-minded car enthusiasts in the future? That's what I call the future, because I don't have time. The pivot on the decision for this car uh -huh. is long-term reliability. Especially on the six-cylinder. Yes. Oh yeah, there's a four-cylinder now, mm -hmm. huh? I think the fours will be, will be, everyone will be buying them up and crashing them and having fun with them. I think the four. <laughs> I like how you keep that. mentioning crashing. That's as, like, why things thing. get expensive. <laughs> they get crashed. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think the Bronco is so valuable? Because they treated them like garbage in the 70s. <laughs> now they're $13,000 with a floor pan that doesn't exist. So I think the four cylinders will be very obtainable mm -hmm. because there is a halo version of the six cylinder. If they release it in a manual, they then are. there's more hope. I think they confirmed it. Yeah, I think it's confirmed. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, great. <laughs> what level of project car right now would you compare the Supra 2 in the future? Well, like the four cylinder would be kind of like a 350Z, mm -hmm. but then the six cylinder would be like a 370, where it's still a little bit out of reach. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's nice, it'll be expensive. If they just keep cranking them out and it doesn't disappear, I think we'll be, we'll, we'll, we'll have plenty to have fun with. Yeah, future is bright. Very. As long as I keep making more of them. Next car!
Okay, so here's another Japanese car that might be a good contender. I'm talking about the Lexus IS300 slash RC300. Both share the same engines. I think these are going to depreciate a lot. A lot, because no one really knows much about them, and I think mm -hmm. it'll get a small following in the future, just like the SC300, uh -huh. like in the Soars or whatever. Um, there will be a small following for them and they're gonna collect all of them, you know? Yeah, I think uh, this could be like an Infinity G35 uh, type thing. I disagree, because the 35s are garbage. <laughs> like, <laughs> like the 350 is valued more than the 35s. I know, I know, yeah. yeah. But the 37s are still like, okay, you know, like, that's kind of nice. I think these will be like VIP builds or whatever mm -hmm. the future of that will be. Both these cars make 241 horsepower out of turbocharged four-cylinder engines. And if this were a project car, you'd probably swap out the turbo for a bigger one in a few years down the road. So that's always an option. Like you said, that's one of the coolest things about cars right now is everything comes with a factory turbo. Mm -hmm. And a little like market research, the original IS300 uh, slash Altezza, the one with the weird taillights, those are still like really cheap. I think this is gonna be more in the middle. So it's like, it's not bright, it's not doom, it's it's gray. The future is <laughs> mid. <laughs> so here's the thing, maybe track performance isn't what you're looking for in a car, okay? It's not what I'm looking for. Our next vehicle offers many different directions of customization. I'm talking about the Ford Maverick. Hell yeah. You love this? <laughs> I. What I love about this truck, or whatever you wanna call it, it's the small truck returning. I know, yeah. And, and mini trucks are gonna come back. There's a guy already doing it. Uh, it's got the four cylinder. There's tons of parts already available for it. You got front wheel drive, all wheel drive, whatever. Oh, dude, that, man, uh, I love mini trucks. Yeah, it, it, you can lift them, you can lower them. You can, it, these are gonna be great. These are like 23 grand right now. I know. They're awesome. more, are they're they? more, yeah. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. I love that a small truck is coming back. I hope more people make small trucks because this thing is successful. Yes. Not everything has to be so freaking big. I don't live on a ranch. <laughs> I live in a city. In the next decade, I bet there'd be a huge community of people who start embracing these things. I'm all for it. I think more than anything we've seen today. Yes. The this future. is this is a bright, bright future. Yeah, almost too bright. Gotta wear shades. Yeah. Oof. We took a little truck detour back to sports cars. I think another good candidate for a bright future in the youth and <laughs> be careful with this one kids because it's a ripper is the Dodge Charger. You see these everywhere. They can obviously do donuts. I mean, it comes with a certain, this personality, this car, is going, this car is going to be a bane to car culture for a while. <laughs> <laughs> We were all so happy when the Charger came back. <laughs> Look at us now. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many of them. So, and, and but that's the recipe. Abundance, availability, and multiple options. They're all over the place. This is the quintessential future project car. This is the definition of a future cheap project car. And I think in a lot of ways, they've already reached cheap project car status. Yeah. I don't know if the future is bright. Ugh. I think the future is scary. It's 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 like a badass metal video, you know. Mm -hmm. It's scary but also cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the future will rain blood from the heavens. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Now this one's a, a pretty similar, an American car with a big old V8. I'm talking about the Camaro. Uh, we've already established that the LT1 offers the best power per dollar of any new car today. Heck yeah. That's value. But even the four cylinder Camaro makes 275 horsepower. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. You can of course get them with a manual and that's a fun, I think that's a fun little package. Yes, perfect future yeah. project car. Right. Like we're gonna see these just as much as we see or Maybe not a little bit much, less yeah. than the Charger, except we're not gonna be like. <laughs> yeah, I, I think this is like a like same recipe, mm -hmm. but a little classier. Yes, and I can't believe I'm calling a Camaro. <laughs> the rules have switched. <laughs> Classy. I like Camaros. I like the new Camaros. I think the future's bright. Great recipe, bright as hell. Guys, we've come to the end of the road. The last car we're gonna talk about, we have to talk about the Tesla Model 3. So this is the best selling entry level electric car in America, meaning there's a ton of them. You can get rear wheel drive models with 283 horsepower. So 
means drifting. I've seen the videos. There's even an autocross package that you can buy. I see that aftermarket growing a lot in the coming years. Da Yoshihara built a race car. Nice. Out of one. Uh, I had one for about a month. I loved it. I would equate it to kind of driving like an E36 Ooh. BMW a little bit. That's it's like, impressive. It's like that same level of like rattling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's obviously a new tech car, but it feels like an old car. It's not spiritless. And you can like adjust the regenerative braking. So when you lift off, it sort of feels like you're engine braking. Yeah, okay. I think they're cool. I was very skeptical before I drove one. But like I, I, I like them. I think these cars are going to be enthusiast cars for a long time. One thousand percent. A I think long time. This is the spearhead of electric cars becoming enthusiast cars, and hopefully a lot of new cars follow in this path. But I think these are going to get cheap relatively soon. Mm -hmm. And yeah, very tempting. Very tempting option. At the end of the day, electric cars are so fast. As long as you get that corporate chokehold off of them so the enthusiasts can have fun with them mm -hmm. and unlock them a little bit, yeah. I think, yeah, I think this will never stop. Once we can jailbreak our cars. Out of everything we've seen today, what is the most exciting future project car for the kids of the next generation? Uh, the Camaro and the Mavericks. I, I think those are going to be the best and then we're never going to not see Teslas. I love those other cars. I think the most exciting car on this list Sorry guys, Tesla Model 3. <laughs> Big announcement, probably the biggest announcement we've ever made. The entire Donut Crew is going on tour. We are gonna come to your town if you live in five very specific cities. That's right. <laughs> it's gonna be so good. <laughs> it's a live theater experience based on all of our YouTube stuff. You're gonna be hearing about some car stuff, some tool stuff. Some joke stuff, lots of audience participation. Uh, it's gonna be a really, really fun time. Tickets go on sale Friday, April 8th. There's also VIP tickets available. Those are very limited. So if you wanna meet us in person and take selfies or whatever and ask us questions, you better hurry and get those. This is new, I'm new, come check us out. <laughs> We're really, really, really excited about this. I'm really, really, really excited to perform live for you guys, excited to meet you guys, and excited to be in your town. So go to donutlive.com, get your tickets today. I can't wait to meet you. Thank you for watching this video and everything else on Donut Media. Hit that subscribe button uh, so you don't miss anything. Hit the like button to tell us that you liked it. Uh, let Justin know in the comments how happy you are that he's finally in LA. We've been talking to him since last year. So happy he's here. Oh, go to donutmedia.com to get some merch. We're dropping new merch stuff every week. I'm so excited about it. I love you. Y'all have a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Sign off. <laughs>